Who are you in Christ? Well, I am full of joy, even in the midst of trials. This is study six, part three of four. Let's look at our text, James 1, verse 4. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Now, possessing a spirit of joy and perseverance gives us victory in the face of temptations and trials. Now, a wonderful thing happens when a person perseveres and conquers the trials and temptations of life. A person becomes more perfect. This does not mean that you are, in a sense, becoming a perfect person, but it does mean that the person is evolving into a perfection of purpose, such as an end, an aim, a goal, or a purpose, to become complete and maturing into full development. Let's look at our text here in Matthew 5, 43, 48. You have heard that it was said you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemy. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collector do the same? And if you greet your brethren, only what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now, when a person stands against trials and temptations, then conquers them, well, they perfect the purpose God intended by becoming strong and a more pure person. Pure means singular in substance or desire. Let's look at Philippians 3, 12, 14. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. God has a twofold purpose for every believer. One, to become more and more like Christ. To fulfill or to do a specific task or job while on earth. Let's look at Ephesians 4, 11 through 15. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking in the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. And, and folks, I, I do have a, a, a real struggle right here because I believe the church is not using these offices described in this text as they should. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers. You know, where's the, where's the evangelists being used anymore? We don't see revivals like we used to. We need to be using all these offices. There is a purpose for every office and a gift of every office to equip the body of Christ. Now, we are to fulfill an obligation and to be who we are in Christ. 
while serving others in our capacity. We are to come to a unity of faith with Christ as our object of faith. We are to become more like Christ in the measure of the fullness of Christ. We should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about by different doctrines, by trickery of men, and by cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. We should just speak the truth in love and mature in Christ. Now, I want to I explain something to you. This maturity in Christ, it can only come when we speak the truth of Christ. We don't need to tell fables. We don't need to tell stories. All we need to speak is the good news of Jesus Christ. That brings salvation. When a person becomes more and more complete in their life, the person becomes fit, perfectly sound, complete with no weakness, flaws, defects, or shortcomings. Day by day and trial by trial, when a person perseveres and is victorious, they become more and more complete by becoming more like Jesus, being strong and more pure. They will be lacking nothing, wanting nothing, needing nothing, and are fully satisfied in Christ. Then... You will be rewarded by God with an eternity of perfection, fitness, completion, and fulfillment forever. Hebrews 10, 35 through 39. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. Hear that? Just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. I'm, I'm speaking to you right now. And I pray that the Spirit of God is speaking to you. Don't you give up. Don't you give in. There is a great reward for perseverance. Yes, you can find joy and peace even in the midst of the trials and the storms. You can do this in Christ and his strength and in Christ alone. Salvation comes through Jesus. And with the salvation, you will be a victor instead of feeling like a victim. Today, Confess your failings and shortcomings, then profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. By knowing God through Christ, you will be delivered. Thank you. God bless each and every one of you.